Welcome to Visionaries, where we explore stories, strategies, and insights from the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs, brands, and creators. We're on a mission to help visionaries like you stand out and monetize their knowledge, influence, and message online. Exploring topics like business, marketing, creativity, and personal development. Let's build your vision for a happier, more meaningful life, business, and community together. Today, Michelle Bridger joins Visionaries. Michelle uses Facebook and Instagram ads to help high-ticket business owners achieve rapid growth. Clients come to her when they have a successful funnel, but they're stuck on how to scale further. She and her team lead with strategy and are a powerful force in taking over ad accounts and helping business owners focus on serving more clients rather than living with their noses in their ad accounts. Michelle and her team aren't just focused on leads, they got their eye on generating more sales through the entire funnel. Michelle's heart is to partner with businesses that are focused on training and service. She and her team create strategies that increase brand awareness and help them quickly grow their bottom line and expand their impact. To date, her powerful methods have brought in over 29 million in revenue for her diverse client base. Michelle, it's so good to have you on the show today. I'm so glad to be here. This is going to be fun. Yeah, so fun. So to set the stage for everyone watching or listening, um, who is Michelle? Uh, Tell us a little bit about your story. So I'm a Facebook and Instagram advertising expert, and I've been doing that for nine years, which is an eternity in this space. So I've walked (laughs) with a lot of really big names, um, Julie Stoyan, Rick Mulready, um, Jenna Kutcher, oh, you know, the list goes on and on, Renee, Christine, so many different people who are large in this space. And um, just, I love working in this area because in Facebook and Instagram ads, you can rapidly grow a business. So when your messaging is on point, the growth that you can have is astronomical. And an example of that is Jenna Kutcher, when she brought me on, she was uh, just a service provider and she was at six figures and we did three launches and took her to $750,000 in that one year. It was her first launch year. So that's the power of Facebook ads. And so I love it, but I didn't always start out this way as the story goes. So I was a stay at home mom for eons and eons and eons. And then I went through a divorce and I needed an income. I needed it in a hurry and I needed it from home because I was homeschooling my kiddos. And so um, I get a lot of prayer <laughs> and where I landed was to start a business. And um, the business I learned was not that business was not a good fit. But I took a course in Facebook advertising to market it. And I went, this is cool. I like this. This is neat. You can target like this. Oh, this is, and I just was really enthralled with it. And so that was, by that time I was in a mastermind. And so I was saying to my colleagues, like, you do a webinar, I'll advertise it for you. (laughs) And, um, and they did. And um, the first one, let's see, we did about, we spent about $800 in ads and she made 12,000 and we're like, yes. Yeah. And so then, you know, other people from the mastermind were like, Michelle, I need you. And so then I started to do webinars or I didn't do the webinars, but they did the webinars. I advertised it and they would have success stories. And so it just kind of like going around the circle and doing these ads for them. And so then I narrowed fairly uh, pretty narrow to be those people who do online courses and um, have stayed in that niche. We have some supplement brands that we've been with for a long time, but um, but for the most part, we do online courses and um, and market those. And that's that's been our specialty. And I have a team that are amazing. And uh, we've really played in this space and done it well for a long time. Yeah. So did you start directly with Facebook ads when you said nine and a half years ago when your journey started in online business? And so I you have. Mm-hmm. That's that's huge because you're right. Like that that means you were especially in this space with these online consultants, uh, I feel like the growth has really accelerated in less than nine years ago uh, for yes. many of, of those online who we know and think of. Um, mm-hmm. what, what When you first started, uh, what did you find uh, 
that was present then that's different now from say like Facebook and Instagram advertising? Oh gosh, the list could go on and on. Um, more things were targetable then than they are now. So unfortunately, a lot of things that were targetable back then are no longer targetable. Um, at that time, Facebook didn't own Instagram. And so that wasn't even part of the mix that you could advertise on. So that's probably, probably two of them. But on the other hand of that, Facebook has improved their game so much because they want advertisers to come in and at all levels because they spend money and um and so they've made it such a, a more usable platform and more of a plug and play kind of platform so um it, it it's a lot more usable than it used to be um it used oh, yeah. to be that uh, power editor i think power if i'm saying that right if i'm remembering right there used to be two different platforms ad manager and power editor, if I'm remembering that right. Somebody will correct me if I'm <laughs> if not that, but, I, but yeah, there used to be two different platforms. Yeah, which is actually, that's an important thing to look at, right? For anyone getting into product development or who are currently doing it, whether it's product, software related, you know, even Facebook, a billion dollar company, goes through iterations and evolves what the product is to make it even better for their audience. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we talked about this before we hit record, but what, uh, one thing that I find, um, a lot of people in this online space experience is a deep money pit of wasted money on paid ads, Instagram, Facebook, even YouTube. Um, why do you think that money pit may exist and how do you get past it and really invest well in ads? Yeah. Good question. So it it can be a money pit if your you your messaging isn't honed in, if um, if you're not clear on what it is that you're really trying to accomplish. So if the ads are not clear, congruent, and compelling, it, it they just won't go well. Ads have to have a very specific, uh, very targeted focus. If, um, if you're going to say something like how to, this is like just totally off the top of my head, how to profit more as an entrepreneur. Well, no one's going to be really interested in that because it's so broad and it's not like, it's just like, that isn't a great example, but, but when, when things are too broad, when things are not specific as an agency, I can tell, and my, my team that works with me, we're just like, mm, no not going to go well. And like, we can predict it. We went through something recently with someone that we were working with and we could tell that the product that they were bringing to us to advertising would not do well because it was very vague, very broad, trying to include everyone um, at every stage in their business. Um, and it, it um, you know, we could tell it was not going to go well. So um, we really counseled them to be more specific, to um, hone in on just one segment of their audience rather than trying to include everyone at all stages. So it's it's very, very important to be very specific, very clear. And then that's when it gets more compelling because when you can buy into something like, oh, they're talking to me, then people listen and people are more likely to believe you. Yeah, which really to me speaks to some of the terminology that exists in the ad buying world, right? From custom audiences or target audiences, lookalike audiences. It's all about getting so specific to exactly who you're looking to serve. And it allows you to get just so custom. And, and that's one thing I love with what Facebook has done and pl ad platforms like that is that when you can get so clear on who you serve versus like, entrepreneurs and it's that broad net of millions of people versus more of a niche focus of what type of entrepreneur are they and even deeper like you know what is that niche of a niche um that you can target and uh mm -hmm. and so to me like i i think that is so powerful it is to recognize that uh, ads do work but when you have other key pieces in place and you have that knowledge set from the messaging your positioning, knowing your audience well enough. Um, 
what would you say like what what makes the Michelle Bridger approach to ads um, stand out and you know long lasting like it is that uh, in I guess converse to other ad opportunities out there let's see we keep my clients they come and they stay for a long time because we get them results and so we stay focused on the strategy we lead the strategy and we continue to lead the strategy so clients come to me when they're like I don't know ads, but my agency, they're not telling me what to do. And they're looking to me for direct this. And, and they just like, ah, they don't, they don't know what to do. And so we lead the strategy and we stay leading in the strategy and we stay very proactive because you have to keep things fresh and innovative. And so my team and I are always looking at, okay, that worked. What's the next step? Oh, that was a great testimonial that we just ran what's the next thing we can ask for the client so we're always trying to stay innovative and fresh and on top of things and lead the strategy another one is communication so you know when an agency gets really busy it's easy for the the communication to tank and so you know a lot of people come to me and they're like i just got ghosted by my agency and so we don't do that we take really good care of them and then they stay for a long time because we really form a deep relationship with them. We deeply care about their business. We intimately know what's going on with their business, who their target market is. And so that's one thing we dig in super deep is we want to know how do they think? How does that client's target market think? What are they like? What's their income bracket? What are their concerns? What are their fears? And when we know that, then we can really speak to that in the ad copy. And the testimonials that we highlight then speak to those fears, those concerns, um, those objections. And we overcome those in the ad copy and also in the testimonials. So it's on a lot of different ways, but just really digging deep with the client to help them be a success and seeing them as individuals and getting to know their business. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Well, and one thing I think about too is how with the show being visionaries and that many of entrepreneurs and brands that come to you, right? They have a vision for what they want to see happen uh, and what these ads can help make happen for them. What would you say for yourself and your business? Like what really lights you up around the future you're helping to create for yourself and your clients? Hmm. What lights me up is success in my client's business. So when they're successful, we're, you know, we're doing our job and then word of mouth gets out. So they refer other people to me. So it's a fun cycle. It's hard to find a Facebook advertiser, Instagram advertiser that is really um, bringing that growth that they're looking for. And, um, and so I get my business, <laughs> I'm not running my own Facebook ads because I don't need to. I get lots of referrals, but what lights me up is when my clients are doing well. When they get on a call, we had a call just recently with a client and she's like, the target market is right on track. I get on these calls with my clients and they just are so excited and it's hardly a sales call. They, you know, like you're hitting my target market and then we get all aglow and happy. And, um, and, and, and so that kind of thing, you know, when we see their growth, when we know we're hitting their target market, when we know we're speaking their target market's language, it's very gratifying to see their growth. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a win-win relationship, really, you know, um, you know, one thing that really speaks to me with, with my vision, um, you know, as you love seeing people's success, which is huge, is this idea that we can make brands more human. And mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel like the ads and the messages, the content you put out um, help to make brands more human online? So my clients are entrepreneurs. For the most part, I have one very large supplement brand, but they're, for the most part, they're just their personal brands. And so we want their personality to show. We want to have images that are them jumping or being silly or, 
somehow to be showing their their personality because that's one it's definitely going to grab attention um it but it also it'll be more likely to draw in their target market then we want the copy to speak the phrases and the way that they speak and so we want to highlight what makes them unique and different and special and we do that in the messaging and it starts with the ad copy it's it comes across in the vi- in the images and the videos that we run we're always 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 running videos and images both and then but then the the ad copy is just a reflection of what's going on in the landing page and so we're looking at the entire funnel from start to finish from ad to landing page to thank you page to sales page to initiate checkout to thank you for purchasing we have our eyes on that entire funnel because we want the messaging to really highlight who that 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 client is what makes them special what makes them unique and most importantly how they can serve how how are they speaking to their target market in that specific compelling and congruent way yeah yeah that's so powerful well and, and one thing i think about that too from an ad side you know the ad creative which mix the visual right still motion to the copy what would you say you know usually people scroll stopping stops with the visual what they see video or still and then reading the copy do you find that a lot of people get to reading the copy or do they skip over the copy sometimes and just jump right into the click through to the next page like what do you find is most attractive we're actually looking at both. We're looking at the click-through rate all, which means that in order to see the entire ad copy, they have to have clicked see more. And so therefore we're looking at the click-through rate all and we're looking, did they click the link? And we're looking at about, we were really happy if we have a three to one ratio there, which means they click to see more, 30% of them clicked to go to the link. So that's what we're looking for. We want them to read all of the ad copy because we're not looking to be clickbaity. Like if we did that, if we were just looking for the click and not to pre-qualify them for the sale or to take the next action, that's not at all what we're about. We want to pre-qualify people with the ad copy and then the ad copy, they're like, oh, that's me. Oh, if only I could, you know, whatever it is. I've got to be on this challenge. I've got to be on this webinar. I've got to, cause man, they just spoke my language. So yeah. then, you know, we've done our job and then they move on through the funnel and they're more likely, so much more likely if we got them in the ad copy and spoke to them well, they'll show up at the webinar, they'll read the sales page, they're more likely to purchase. So it all starts with the ad copy. Yeah, and and that's huge to point out too, cause that, this is one thing I thought about, cause I, very much my business is related to content and visuals. And um, there's a lot of fun you can have with yeah. just the visuals alone to s- stop people scroll. But sometimes that visual can be completely unrelated to the copy and the message you're trying to deliver. And there's those are kind of incongruent um, pieces sometimes, at least what I've seen with different ads, that it stops my scroll, but then I'm like, oh, this is not really for me. Um, and, and sometimes, and sometimes I, I've at least seen both work, but, um, do you find that you need to have both connect pretty closely or can the visual be pretty, um, pretty generic, um, sometimes, you know, I want them to connect, but here's an example. Um, this morning I was preparing for the summit that you're doing and the talk that I'm doing, and I was going through examples that I'm going to be using in that talk and looking through testimonials that we've used over time for different clients. And one of them was a gal sitting in a lawn chair, my client sitting in a lawn chair, her knees pulled up. She's in a bright yellow shirt. And it says, these stories make me laugh. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to read the copy. And then in the copy, we have testimonial after testimonial after testimonial of these huge success stories that make her laugh and so you don't the image is very eye-catching visually and then it makes you want to read the copy to me that's a huge success yeah um because we want we like i'm not looking 
for an image that's disconnected with the copy. Now, it is good to have a lifestyle image and what that means is that it might be my client's family, it might be uh, my client, you know, standing on what looks like the side of a cliff. I, like, I'm not coming up with a great example, but it's like, it's not really about the copy, but it's also like, it's still somehow centered around my client, but I'm definitely not looking to, you know, talk about how to avoid burnout. And we have an image full of pink balloons and yellow rainbows. Yeah. Like it'd be like, no, like that would be, but I do know of um, companies where they've been running massive, like hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of ads per month. And then they just run out of ideas. And, um, and so then they're trying anything. And so sometimes I think that's what you see, but, yeah. but I do want them to have some connection, definitely not just looking for that clickbait. Yeah. Which is that clickbait definitely comes down to, I mean, sometimes the most generic ads that are, are visually, they do stand out at least to like pull you in like, oh, that's interesting. But yeah, mm -hmm. like I, I do find there's a kind of a disconnect at that point. And, and I find the ones that definitely call to me are the ones that not only help me connect to the brand as a human, be like, oh, I recognize that person or that person mm -hmm. looks like me or runs a business like me. Uh, and then, yeah, the copy does some selling, but it's, it is interesting to kind of break this down. I'm, I'm glad you have, and I'm sure you're going to share even more nuggets and insights, um, in the visionary summit coming up soon. So this is, uh, this is so helpful. And, and I love learning about these processes because a lot of people, um, fear the approach of paid ads because, um, there are a lot of success and failure stories. Of, of people I think get caught up with like, hey, I wanna replicate the same success as this person. So it's like yeah. lightning strike twice, you know? Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. what would be a, a kind of a, a send off message to those who want to see more success from their ad efforts, their marketing efforts, um, and that reassurance that here's the next right step you can take? So I would really look to see what does your target market really want and not assume that you, you have it nailed, but really make sure that you know specifically what it is that they want. And that takes asking a lot of questions. It takes really good listening. It, it takes some investigation and some work um, to, and to have it be clear. And so once you think you know what it is, whether it's a PDF or whether it's a webinar, then make sure it's absolutely clear. And this takes running it by colleagues and especially people who are in your target market, because so often someone will bring us an offer to advertise and we're like, you know, it's not clear. Like we don't understand, like, how does this connect with this? And, and so we help them in my agency to bring clarity and we ask specific questions. And then often the messaging will be refined to make it more clear. Cause if it's not clear, it just simply won't convert. And then compelling. So having a really good copywriter help you to bring out your story, to interconnect, to, it's so important to have good copy so that you have your congruent all the way across. So clear, compelling, and congruent. So your ads should be congruent with your landing page and the whole process should be speaking the same language all the way across, the same messaging all the way through. Because if you're not congruent from ad to landing page, people will just be like, no, no, that's, mm -mm. And, you'll, and you'll see it because you have a high bounce rate and a low landing page conversion rate. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so powerful, Michelle. Um, and I'm so appreciative of your time and everything you've had to share. Uh, where can people learn more about you and what you offer? Mm -hmm. So they can go to michellebridger.com, michellebridger.com. Um, if you want to have insights from the email list, it is michellesfreegift.com. But love to connect with you. And, you know, if you're ready to run ads and, um, you know, ready to find out more, if it's a good fit for you, you can go to michelleschedule.com. But I'd love to connect. Amazing. Thanks so much.